The House of Representatives passed the 2022 Appropriation Act, raising the budget size to 17.126 trillion naira from 16.39 trillion naira. And also this morning, we will look through the papers and see what major stories have made headlines across the country uh, this uh, morning on The Breakfast. Thanks for joining us on The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. I am Osaogi Ogbonwan. And I am Messi Bopo. It's good to have you join us this beautiful morning. Yes, it is. And as you uh, make it to work this morning, uh, we are still counting down to Christmas. Uh, three days left till it is uh, the 25th. And so we're, of course, uh, continuing to wish everyone a Merry Christmas. And, um, you know, very interesting celebrations as the 2021 year uh, wraps up. But of course, uh, we always start the program this morning with top trending stories and uh, share with you what major conversations have made headlines across, you know, the whole country in the last 24 hours. And we're starting here in Lagos, where the Yaba Chiefs Magistrate Court has granted bail to the five accused in the death of Sylvester Romani, the uh, Darwin College uh, student, a uh, um, young boy who was killed a few weeks ago. And of course, uh, that has, of course, created a lot of conversations across the country. Um, there's arguments as to whether, you know, murder is a bailable offense and whatnot. And, you know, of course, what the family is currently dealing with, you know, and, and that's one of the things that, you know, I also had to focus on, um, you know, reading the story yesterday that they've been granted bail. They were, first of all, of course, sent to juvenile detention, um, who didn't last for long. And then, of course, they were granted bail. Um, you know, for me, I'm really concerned mostly about what the family is currently dealing with. Um, I, you know, I've continuously said that no family deserves to go through this, you know, not just losing the child, but the whole, you know, torturous process of having to go through the court process and the, the police investigation, the autopsy and some of all of that. It is just really, really, really painful. And I feel bad for the family, the parents, uh, mostly of this, um, you know, very, very, very sweet young boy. Um, I feel really, really bad for them and, and um, my heart continues to go out to them. But... For now, they've been granted bail. Let's see where the court um, or the case continues to lead and where it builds up to. Uh, well, you know, that has also, I mean, the, the conversation has been around that particular, you know, action from the court granting bail. And some people are asking, is this really justice? This, this you know, um, can this compensate for the death of this young boy and the pain, like you have mentioned, that the family is going through. Now, the issue of homicide, uh, you know, because he's been charged, I mean, the, the case now is homicide. And when you look at what homicide is or what it is in the law, uh, that you cause the death of another person. So it has been established. However, I'm sure that, you know, the family at some point will begin to, might, um, you know, come to, will begin to accept or come to some time of accepting uh, peace or finding peace because uh, looking at all of the interviews and all of the interaction they constantly said they wanted justice now and if the courts have actually because that's what homicide is the fact that uh, you know one is responsible for the, the death of another person and conspiracy homicide and conspiracy and you want to talk about the fact that you know this person's actually uh, committed an unlawful act the plan to commit an unlawful act so all of this has been established it's been established that this set of uh, you know kids or this children five of them caused the death of you know Sylvester Romino and uh, I think that that's one thing that we can actually uh, you know bank on it's something but whether that is enough compensation or isn't it's enough like you have mentioned it's a case of mother here and whether because you would say mother it's an intentional you know an act to kill someone but um, however it is someone is dead and, you know, yeah, with well, the law, it is the law. Now, and also, another case also is the fact that they are juveniles because you also want to begin to look at it. And I remember sometime having this conversation with my uh, folks or with some folks, and we talked about the fact that if, you know, kids within these ages, because the law in the country would say uh, a child who is age seven is not criminally responsible, so whether they commit a crime or not, they're not. But under the age of 17, you would say that, yes, um, you know, they can be sent to uh, the juvenile detention and what have you. And some persons will say, we'll probably just allow them to turn 18 and then the law should meet up with them when they turn 18. Maybe we should begin to, um, you know, have these laws that 
at the, when they turn 18, wherever it is that they are, they are made to face, you know, the real sentence and whatever. Well, there, 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 aside, you know, the, um, you know, what the law says, you know, I think there's also, you know, sp uh, specific laws, you know, um, in Lagos State, you know, for protection of, uh, of the child. So I think those are some of the things that they would also, you know, have to look at, you know, whether those laws are currently in place or not, you know, if they are being tried, tried as adults or tried as, um, as juveniles. Um, it's, it's, the case is not over yet, you know, they've just been granted bail. I'm sure that they will still have multiple court cases. Um, you know, there would be, of course, a prosecution trying to prove their, their point. You know, I, I was saying yesterday that I need to be sure what exactly um, is the best charge for them, because if you place the wrong charge on them, they, they, can, they can beat the case. Um, but, you know, they haven't been found guilty. Um, you know, there was, of course, the dying confession and dying statements of uh, Sylvester that will, of course, uh, be administered in court or be, would be, um, you know, put, uh, put in, um, in the whole case. Um, so these things will, you know, eventually play out. Um, I'm hoping, you know, that everyone continues to focus and ensure that they do not take their eyes off the case. Um, the, the story of somebody or one of the, of the students being flown abroad, you know, I, I didn't get to see much about that, whether that was true or not. Um, if he is one of the five people who has been granted bail now or, you know, he didn't even come back to Nigeria. I don't even know if that story is true. Um, but the, the case continues, you know, and we'll see where, you know, the Lagos State, uh, you know, government is uh, able to lead with this. And, of course, what the, the criminal justice system eventually, you know, ends up with this. Um, I drive by that, by that school every day on my way home. You know, so every day I'm reminded of, you know, his death, you know, and reminded of how painful it is, you know, because if you drive by, you would see, you know, policemen in front of the gate, and then you would see, you know, also just by the gate there, um, flowers and gifts and balloons, you know, that were brought for his birthday um, a couple of days after he, he passed. So um, it's a painful reminder every day, you know, of that story. And, you know, I just continue to, would, uh, I will just continue to follow up uh, to see where this leads and, you know, see, if, you know, if, if they will get the justice that they seek. Mm. Well, we, we, we hope that they get the justice that they seek because if you look at the course of events and things that has happened, you know, in 2021, this is one of it, very painful. And I also like the fact that, you know, everyone has been very involved, uh, not entirely, but and like you have mentioned, it would be a good thing that uh, we follow through to ensure that, you know, justice is actually yeah. served. All right. Away from um, Sylvester and, of course, the Doan College um, issue, let's move to Zaria now where there was once again a northeast bleeding protest yesterday that led to the arrest of eight uh, you know, of the protesters by the Nigerian police. This has you know, gone on for a couple of weeks now where um, Nigerian citizens living in northern Nigeria have come out to protest against the Nigerian government's failure to protect lives and property. Um, if you remember yesterday, we spoke about you know, another 40, 38, you know, 23 different figures here and there, uh, people who have been murdered in the last 48 hours in uh, Kaduna and in Nasser, Nasser I think, um, state. Um, and so the North is bleeding protest has continued. It, it, it started a few weeks ago and has continued. But yesterday's protest eventually led to the arrest of eight of these individuals, which is pretty interesting because I've, I've you know, multiple times, and not just in the South, not just in Lagos, um, not just in Abuja also, the Nigerian police has continued to seemingly be totally against protesting and, and the rights to protest here in Nigeria. And we've complained about this. You know, Nigerians have also spoken about this multiple times. You know, why it seems like there, you know, there, there seems to be a clamp down on protests every single time. It doesn't even, even need to get violent or seem to be violent before the police immediately crack down on those protesters. But one angle that I would, you know, also point out is, you know, initially when this started a few weeks, I think two, three weeks ago, when there was the first North East bleeding protest, there were online conversations as to, you know, why the protest is happening only in the North, you know, and why isn't, you know, southern part of Nigeria also joining in the protest and some of all of that. You know, people also looked at the number of people who actually even came out to protest and said, oh, these numbers are pretty small. It doesn't seem like Compared they're... Compared to when you have the elections. Yes, exactly. You know, so it doesn't seem like these people are really, really serious um, you know which are fair sentiments that you you would hear here and there um, there's also those who said you know it, it really it doesn't really concern you know southern Nigeria because southern Nigeria has been protesting for a long time 
you know, for cases that, you know, concern them and cases that don't even concern them, you know, and you would always get to hear some backlash from, you know, persons in the north. Seem, you know, some, some random spokespersons of some random groups. You know, I remember during the NSAS protests also, there was a few individuals who came out and, you know, and condemned the NSAS protests and, you know, whatnot and said it was a, you know, it was an anti-Buhari protest or it was, you know, meant to, you know, to pull the country down or destabilize the country and some of all of that. Um, Forgetting that some of the things that were mentioned in the anti in the in the NSAS protests were, you know, about protecting Nigerian citizens and you know the Nigerian government standing up to its responsibility, stepping up to its responsibilities, um, and so you know I, I understand where those sentiments are coming from concerning whether the South should join, you know, whether there should be protests in the South, um, also demanding you know that there is security in the North and of course across the whole country. No, so it brings us back, you know, to the fact that uh, when you remember that the protests started, we had all of those reactions. I mean, these comments coming through saying, oh hash. And says there was no pro police brutality, and so he felt like the police brutality was just, you know, in a certain part of the country and not entirely across, you know, uh, you know, the federation. But you see, um, it, the, the fact that we have never been united, or it seemed like we, we because it, as it is right now, it feels like we are united, but constantly you see that uh, there's a lot of division. And so we're, see, we're divided to the north, we're divided to the south, the east, and the west, and that's the issue. But like you have mentioned, this is a fair you know, sentiment, uh, this is a fair concern. And people are saying, when you know the South actually had all of this, I mean, when the, the protest, the hashtag, I, I saw those kind of comments. I, I read a lot of them. And some people said, oh, no, this is not it. There's nothing like police brutality. It was just being fabricated by some persons who are not pleased by the, you know, the uh, administration of President Mohammed Buhari and what have you. But the truth is the entire country is bleeding yeah. uh, and in different, you know, dimension. That's what it is. The, the issues are not, um, you know, the same. There are different issues, but we're all bleeding and whether we should come together. So it, it just shows you that the issue of security is a national issue. And now that, you know, everyone is actually waking up uh, to say, OK, some parts, uh, some persons in another part of the country waking up to say we're joining the protest, we're speaking up. Uh, but should we join, you know? I don't, I don't know. I can't decide. But it, it just shows you that because it's not happened to you yet, doesn't mean it won't come. It might come in different colors and well, come in different forms and dimensions. So I, I think but, it's also, you know, sorry, I, I think it's, you know, you know, so context is a little different, you know, here and there, you know, but it's it, the, the general idea is, you know, the fact that the Nigerian citizens have continuously had a, have always had a right to protest, you know, and so what their level of interest is is, is what deter determines uh, whether they will protest or not. There's people who will protest, you know, or who are controlled by, you know, their love for Nigeria and the fact that they want to always demand better government. There's those who are controlled by religion and, you know, that will determine whether they will protest or not. There's those who are controlled by money and that will determine whether they will protest or not. And so, you know, it's these different dimensions, dimensions here and there. And I know that that's also religion is also one of the things that has decided, you know, or has been a deciding factor as to whether certain groups will join a protest or not. And but but, but the, I'm thinking that, you know, if it should be for the cause of like uh, when the uh, protest actually started, the police brutality and police brutality in Nigeria, it was for the cause that, you know, uh, a Nigerian somewhere, I can't really remember, you know, the exact name and all of that. That video that went viral somewhere around, uh, you know, Almost it was in Delta State. In Delta State, yeah. Uh, you know, that led to that particular. So I, I say that even Nigerian, it doesn't really matter. So until we come to a point where we understand that one life actually, as long as you're a Nigerian, it doesn't matter whether you're from the north or the south or the east or the west. Uh, we should come to that point. Now we're actually trying to get support from all of that. But what happens? So because it doesn't happen in your region doesn't mean you shouldn't join. I'm hoping that we find, you know, one voice. That's number one. On the other hand, I am still very worried and totally disappointed and constantly asking why we do not understand that everyone has a right to, you know, peaceful assembly as been granted by the Constitution. And if the Constitution is a book that governs, you know, the affairs of the country and how we act and do not act, then why are we not respecting that? Is it that the Nigerian police does, uh, do not or don't understand the dynamics of uh, being in a democratic dispensation and having people protest? And people constantly say, how come it's so easy for us to flex our muscle when you find 
harmless people who come out. I mean, like we would say, it feels like Nigeria is just embracing protests. I was speaking to some of my friends, you know, outside, and like, oh, it feels like we're just embrace, embracing protests at this point in time. But like I always say, protest has been used as a tool over time by different countries to demand from government what they want. And it has worked. In, in several countries, you see people resign, you know, top government official resigning and stepping down because of protest. And because when policies, it, so it brings us back to the fact that I don't understand who we govern. For every time we come out to seek that the people should, you know, vote for us and we buy, uh, we want, you know, people to cast their vote and support us. Who are you supporting? Government policies at the end of the day are supposed to translate to development, you know, policies that would, you know, touch the lives of the people. And at the end of the day, because it's part of the policy cycle, if the people are speaking right now, they are saying that the policies that you're making, because whether or not government acts is a policy. So whether or not government decides to take care of, you know, the killings and react to all of the things that are happening, whatever they do or do not do, it's a policy. And so the people have a right. It's just a feedback into the system. So it's normal in a, in a normal climb, you would expect that people would sit back and pay attention to the things that these people are talking about. It is not rocket science. The people are saying that people are being killed. I mean, I watched the clip the other day. The lady, I mean, people are broken. People are dying. Life is not like the Mario game. I grew up playing Mario game and then you have four lives. So if you lose one, you have three. And then you can be careful with the three, then you, you can be careless and then be careful when you have the remaining two. No, I'm just saying, it's just one. You're gone and you're gone. So I, I really do not understand, but until we get to a point where we pay attention to the lives of people as a government. And then constant, maybe we need to just find a way to sing it. Maybe our leaders need to understand that it is our responsibility to protect lives and properties. That's why you're elected. And all of the excuses that, you know, I'm not, a, you are not the security officers of our state. But of course you collect security votes. What do you do with that? The fact that you are governor of a state, the lives of the people should be a major concern. I do not understand. And it is totally disappointing every other time you find the president saying, oh, we condemn the attacks. I am totally disappointed. We are disgruntled. And so we are invoking. No action. People are not being arrested. We know these persons. How long will we continue? But you know, it's getting to everybody. It's getting to no one is safe. Nobody's safe. Mm -hmm. I mean, the governors are not safe. The lawmakers are not left out. They can't actually walk into their constituency freely. I mean, I, we dare them to do that if you think it's easy. So we, we just need to sit back and find a way to solve the problem. Well, um, it depends on the level of interest that they have. There's too many, you know, angles to this, uh, to be honest. And, you know, we may not have time to really go into them. But there's, there's so much uh, that needs to be said about the right to protest, about the actions of the police when they see protesters, about the failure of the Nigerian government to protect its citizens, and then also clamping down on them when they complain. There's too much of it. And of course, you know, the angle that we started with, you know, if this should be a nationwide protest or not. Um, and of course, um, the level of, um, you know, trust. I think there's some trust issues, you know, between one side and the other. And that's why one side decides, uh, okay, you guys are protesting, we'll, we'll stay out of this one um, because, you know, we don't trust you. I think that's, that's really where it is um, and you know because you know after, right after this protest you know if there's an election the next day you guys you're going to do the same thing that you did four years ago so um, <laughs> so but those those are just the different angles and the different parts of the conversation but people need know, to understand like I always say yeah. you know sometimes you see statement being put out and I say that until we understand that Nigeria is bigger than you know uh, anybody it's bigger than yeah. anybody's interest it's not about a region as so usually so when anything happens I mean the fact that people are saying that police there's police brutality and somebody says oh this is about the president yeah, that, that, the that, it does not it does not revolve around that's why I said know. initially that there's different motivations for protesting some people are protesting because they're actually tired some are protesting because you know they want to bring down government some are protesting because or some of them will not protest because well the person in, in government you know is you know they're they're, uh, is, they're benefiting from person in government or maybe because they're in the same religion you know whatever it is the different reasons and so when you hear statements like that you know it's fueled by something it's either because of money or because of religious interest political interest something is behind a, the a person's reason to either protest or to not protest it, it's 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 always pretty obvious when you see it but of course you know i hope that this comes up in some of the conversations that we have this week still talking about protests and then this is going to be our final um trending story this morning there will According to the IPOB, be a protest, um, you know, for the release of Namdi Kano. But this time, not in Nigeria. It's going to be taking place in Israel. 
It has been selected for the 27th of December and it was put out yesterday by the IPOB, um, you know, notifying their members who are in Israel or who will be visiting Israel that they should all come out uh, to protest uh, and demand for the release of Namdi Kano. I don't know how effective this will be um, because, of course, the actions here and the lockdowns every Monday in the Southeast have not been able to achieve much with regards to his release um, by the Nigerian government. Um, I don't know how the one in Israel will help, you know, and, you know, I, I, over time, you know, and I, I've seen people complain about this also, why the IPOB feels like they have any link with Israel or with the Jews, you know, why, why they feel, because there's that narrative, and that's where this is coming from. There's that narrative that, you know, the Igbos are all Jews and they came from somewhere around Israel before they got, <laughs> <laughs> before they got down to the southeast, you know, and um, there is that narrative, and if you speak with, you know, some of these are pro-IPOB persons, you would hear that, you know, story. So that's why it's happening in Israel, not in Germany, not in France, not in, you know, Burkina Faso, anywhere else, but in Israel. Um, I, I really do not think that this will also be in any way effective. Uh, the Israeli government is not going to tell the Nigerian government to release Nam Of course, of course, um, because well, first of all, we're a sovereign nation. I mean, there are issues that have been put out. Whether or not uh, these issues are uh, very true and correct, but you find out that right now, you know, you have a case in court, and so. Uh, Nigeria is a sovereign nation. The fact that I totally understand m to that angle, I really do not know um, the genesis and the fact that there's a relation with Israel or them being from the Jew. But m what I'm thinking is it could just be that, uh, you know how it is that you just want an interference, you want, you know, superior uh, power, you want a superior, you know, person to show up on your behalf. Maybe. Who now? <laughs> I don't know the Israel, I, the Israeli, Israeli government. <laughs> I don't. I don't know how that's going to work. Maybe there will be some kind of talks, some negotiation, phone calls put across, or you know. I don't know how that's going to work, but um, I, I think that uh, because I've been thinking, if you look at you know the pattern for whatever it is that I mean the demands, the fact that you're saying you want self determination, it's fine. I mean, it's been guaranteed. If you look at the fact that we're part of that charter, the African charter, uh, it's okay for you to demand what you're demanding, that you want to go away. But the problem here is getting, you know, the Nigerian government to pay attention. And now the fact that you have, you know, the leader in custody for um, several reasons. I mean, the case is a court, and we, we, yes. one of us was supposed to talk about it. Uh, we can't talk about it because of that. But my point is, I think that, you know, uh, they need to go back to the drawing board and, and find out, you know, other ways of solving this problem. Well, um, uh, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm really but, not but, sure. But you know, be, it be, and, because it's in court, the, the law should always take its place. Now, all that we're asking is there should be, it should be a fair hearing, it should be fair, there should yeah. be justice and no partiality. That's all that everyone is asking. Yeah, but I'm just wondering what a protest in Israel will you know, achieve. I, you know, I and really it's, don't it's know. their right to protest, no doubt. You know, and of mm. course, everyone is also still encouraging that there's a free and uh, there's a fair trial, you know, for Namdi Kanu. Um, you know, they have a right to protest wherever they choose to, you know, across the world, you know. I was really just speaking about why they chose Israel, you know, and that narrative that they have maybe, maybe the one that you're superior, the one you brought us to help? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, those are top trending stories this morning. Stay with us. Uh, we will take a short break. When we come back, we're going through the major newspapers making, and uh, looking at the stories making headlines across the country this morning. Our guests will be joining us here on The Breakfast. Stay with us. We'll be back.